Hey guys, Al here, Vitalized Seed. Hope everybody's having a good day. Um, wanted to talk today about root diversity. And why does it matter? Why is it important? Um, so in this picture behind me, you can see this is our nitro boost planting, an incredible amount of above ground biomass. Um, believe it or not, the sorghum and Sudan that's in that mix is actually a small percentage. So in below all of that is, uh, you have clover and beans and lab lab and sun hemp and sunflowers and, and uh, many other species, right? So there's 14 total species. Um, but the above ground biomass is always critical and it's going to help us to feed the next planting. But the below ground biomass is really where the magic happens from a soil creation perspective and also nutrient retention spec perspective. And I wanted to highlight how and why that works. So in this picture, it's really easy to see that, you know, a monoculture on the left, and this is just a visual, obviously it's going to depend on what you're planting as a monoculture, but versus a really diverse cover crop species, and you see the varying um, root depths. So one of the things to keep in mind is, you know, we did some other videos on nutrient stratification, which is the difference, difference in, root, in nutrients um, at different rooting depths or different areas of the soil profile. Um, when you have really diverse root systems, as you can see in this picture, you have roots that are going to be gathering or sequestering is a common term that's going to be used or mining nutrients from all different levels. At the same time, if you're balancing this, like we do at, at Vitalize Seed in our Nitro Boost and Carbon Load, with legumes, you're going to have additional nitrogen for talking purposes being um, fixed in from you know atmospheric nitrogen being fixed through um, symbiotic relationships with bacteria in the soil. Again, why we include our seed armor to make sure that we do have that good bacteria in the soil. Um, but not just nitrogen, we're also going to be solubilizing phosphorus way down deep and iron way down deep through these symbiotic relationships. Now, these plants are also going to be um, working with the fungal networks and the bio biology at all different le le levels Excuse me, in the soil or depths in the soil. Um, and why is that important? Well, because now, if especially mycorrhizal fungi, we're not just increasing our mycorrhizal fungi network at this deep in the soil in a monoculture of XYZ plant species. We are having all of these different rooting structures that are now all incorporating a mycorrhizal fungi connection. And even plants that are non-mycorrhizal, like uh, brassicas, have been shown to take advantage of the mycorrhizal network in robust cover crop species. I believe Dr. Christine Jones talks about this. So as you can see here, not only are you breaking up compaction and sequestering nutrients and maximizing biology at different levels, um, you're also creating a heck of a lot of biomass above and below ground with those diverse cover crop mixes. You know, but don't just take my word for it. This was a study that was done. I believe the gentleman was from um, Penn State University. He did, I think it was like an 11 year study on um, diverse cover crop mixes. Um, obviously, here is diversity in root morphology uh, and architecture enables plants to acquire water and nutrients in contrasting substrate conditions, resist biotic and abiotic stress, so it's stress reduction, and develop symbiotic associations, what we were talking about with the mycorrhizal fungi. Here it goes on to say they did a five species mix, um, and it went on to say they're going to do additional testing as well into even more diversity and more mixes. Um, but this, they compared five species mix to monocultures of, I think it was a monoculture of chitter kale, monoculture of crimson clover, and the five species mix, uh, what is it, was increased quantity and distribution of fruits compared to the crimson clover monoculture. Um, and it goes on to tell you more information about that and reference some of the uh, institutions that were a part of that research. And then again, um, in the same article, it talks about uh, the gentleman was K, uh, I forget his first name, but the cover crop mixtures increased total carbon inputs into the soil um, because they simultaneously had high root and shoot inputs and they promoted higher carbon inputs from the corn crop residues. The corn crop was more productive following the mixtures than the following grasses. And while we harvest a lot of uh, of that productivity, some gets left behind in the residues, he said. I think it's really interesting because it shows that the effect of cover crops on soil carbon are not just related to their own roots and shoots, but also how they affect the growth of the cash crops. Um, so basically saying that you know they revealed that they were um, able to maximize the efficiencies of not only the cover crop and carbon sequestration and all that, but also the following crop, which is something we really talk about a lot at Vitalize Seed, is it's not as much about a singular crop, but the program and the process of the crops in which follow, you know, so whether you're using our carbon load in the fall and then you're going to follow it by corn the next spring, we can work with you to make sure that it's going to maximize your results. Um, but for most guys who are doing just food plotting, you can just stick to you know the one-two system, which is going to feed the soil, 
um, above and below ground. It's going to feed a lot of wildlife. It's going to be attractive to a lot of wildlife. And then, of course, it's going to prep you for your cash crop, which is carbon load, which is during the hunting season. And you just continue that rotation. Um, but you can also use this, like we've worked with many farmers, um, both big and small gardeners, et cetera, that are using ours to prep the ground to make sure that their cash crop that next spring is uh, taking full advantage of the soil biology and the biomass above and below ground. Hopefully you all found this helpful. That's a little bit of why soil diversity and root diversity is so important. Check us out if you like this information at vitalizedseed.com and please share and follow along.